Hey Tubes, John G. Smith here and welcome back to my very first LEGO Star Wars 2017 Winter Set Review. <laughs> to start off this new year of LEGO Star Wars sets, despite the fact that it's technically still the previous year, we have the Rebel Trooper Battle Pack, set number 75164, ages 6 to 12, comes with 120 pieces and degree retailing for £12 or $13. This is of course based off Rogue One, the film which just came out a few days ago from my perspective. Amazing film, I highly recommend you go check it out. I doubt this line will be as popular as the previous line, as in like the Force Awakens line, because of course the film itself I doubt will be as popular as the previous film. That being said, I think it's a really, really good battle pack. In my personal opinion, I'm just going to say it right now, I do not think this is truly as good as the battle pack we got last year for like the Rebels, but still it's a great battle pack. I love this little turret thing here, and the little speeder is different which is very very cool and I cannot wait to get more of these I don't think I'll get that many again not as many as I got of the previous battle pack but still quite a few and a really good battle pack to see but before review we have to of course build it because you know you have to do it on Lego so with that being said let's go now and build the Rebel Trooper Battle Pack Of course, as with all battle packs, the build wasn't anything too particularly special, it only took about 10 minutes. I did notice, however, that some of the pieces, especially with this particular turret right here, are quite rare, in actual fact, aren't seen in many battle packs, or in fact, many sets whatsoever. So I would say if you're a mock builder, maybe if you've got a brick link side to side along those lines, you may want to get a lot of this set, not just for the minifigs, but also for the set itself, because there are quite a few different pieces here, which I think could be quite valuable. And of course, I'm not uh, on a brick link, and I'm not, you know, in that sort of thing, so I don't really know how much they could go for, I don't really know anything about it, but I'm just saying, that I do believe that some of these would go for a little bit, so there's maybe a good um, set to get like a few of just if you want to part it out. Anyway, with that being said, let's go now and start off with the four minifigures we have right before us. Here we have our first Rebel Trooper, somewhat similar to other Rebel Troopers we have seen in other sets, such as this one, which we saw in the uh, Rebel Alliance Battle Pack from last year. Now, before I start, I just want to say that my throat is kind of a little froggy right now, I suppose, mainly because I'm still trying to recover from a cold which I've had for a little while, so just bear that in mind while I'm going through this review. So if I sound like I'm kind of, you know, my throat's on fire, that's why. Nonetheless, here we have our first Rebel Trooper, as I just said, very nice printing. Of course, there's very basic printing on the legs right there. In fact, it's so basic, I've got to hold up the minifigure just to show you that, I mean, it's, 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 oops, the thing just fell off, anyway, it's extremely basic printing, barely visible, still pretty nice to have some printing, although to be honest with you, it kind of makes it a bit redundant if you can't see it, although that is also somewhat reminiscent of not this particular printing, but also another one from the Rebel True Battle Pack as well. Putting the mini figure back on the stand and making sure the stand doesn't fall over this time, we can see the torso printing is very nice, I'm pretty sure it is unique, we don't see in any other of mini figures from this battle pack, or if, in fact I think any other mini figures we've ever seen before. So it's a very nice um, printing there we get to see for the first time, very very cool. I'm also, I'm not entirely sure if this is the first printing of like face printing we've ever seen of this, but I'm pretty sure it's the first time we've ever seen it on a Rebel minifigure, I'm not entirely sure, I mean of course I don't have every Rebel minifigure ever created, but I don't think I've ever seen it before, so that's pretty nice to have, of course, one of the good things about Rebels, unlike Stormtroopers, is the fact they are more unique, they're more sort of personalised, and you know, of course you have different species and things like that, it's one of the best things about the Rebels, the kind of, you know, it's called mix and match, to take whoever they can take. Now you can see the hat here is exactly the same one we did get in the Rebel Alliance Battle Pack from last year, which is pretty cool, I mean, technically I say last year, technically it was this year, but that's a the point. <laughs> um, but that's still a very nice sort of thing, it gives us a bit of uniformity to all these different minifigures, you can definitely tell that this is a Rebel. We have the um, usual sort of flick uh, gun here, which I'm not a big fan of whatsoever, I really wish 
wish they go back to previous ones. I wouldn't mind as much if it's like on a, uh, like a small thing, such as like this little thing here. I know it's not a big deal, but with these actual characters, if it's in replace of an actual gun, you know, because that just means I have to now go on Bricklink or like wherever to buy like a custom gun, because I'm not going to put my army with a bunch of sort of these type of weapons, am I? Anyway, so you can see there the printing again, very nice. You don't have any gloves, unlike some of the others. But overall, we've got a little bit of back printing that there, but still, very nice printing all over, very cool guy. I'd say he's one of the best minifigures of the set, although that's not really saying that much. I mean, they're all somewhat similar. I don't know why, I just kind of like this guy, he looks pretty cool. That being said, let's move on to the next Rebel Trooper. Here we are with our next Rebel Trooper, and as I said before, one of the best things about the Rebel Troopers, in my opinion, is their sort of individuality. Unlike the Storm Troopers, which all look the same, of course, Rebel Troopers look different. They're different species, they look different, you know, the armor and the kind of sort of things they wear are different. That's why I really like um, Lego portraying, rather than just like the same face, same tools printing. That's why I really like, you know, those sort of things where everything is different. Every single minifigure in the set is different, which I think is a big plus. This guy, of course, is significantly different from this guy. Of course, the beard, I think, is slightly different in terms of not just those, obviously, the color. Color, but also the beard itself, this one's sort of more jagged, more pointy, whereas this one's sort of more trimmed, I suppose. He kind of looks younger, in my opinion. I haven't really seen this face painting, in fact, at all on any Star Wars minifigs before. So it's kind of nice to get him in, in that way, you know, a different kind of thing for that, so that's pretty cool. Um, the leg printing is definitely a lot more prominent than in the first one. Very nice, sort of this bluish grey uh, colour, I suppose. I don't really know Bricklink colours, so, you know, if you're a Bricklinker, you may know the exact colours of different things, but nonetheless. We saw a sweet that see also the torso printing is also quite nice. It's the same sort of colour in terms of the actual brick as the ones we got in the Rebel Alliance Battle Pack. I feel like I'm comparing it to the previous one quite a bit. But still you can see also the torso printing though is significantly different. We've got some shinier elements there, you know, some nice belt printing and other stuff like that. It's a bit surprising they got a belt printed on the torso and there's actually no belt actually printed on the belt. But still pretty cool. We can see turning it back around there. We've also got back printing, which is also very nice. This hat, I mean I don't want to call it I suppose it is a helmet, but I don't really recall that because it looks more like a hat. Anyway, this hat is a significantly different colour to the one we got before. Like, not just obviously in the Rebel Alliance one, but also the one um, that we just got before, so that's also a nice addition. I'm not aware if we've seen this sort of hat in this colour before. We might have done, I don't know, but I don't have every Rebel figure ever, so maybe. I haven't personally seen it before, so it's nice that we do get some sort of variation there. And as with the last one, he also comes with this spring load, not spring load, whatever it's called, you know, which I don't like, as I've said before, but still, there you go. Very nice. I like the fact we do get a different kind of guy. He is somewhat basic, although that seems a bit odd to say because the torso does look quite nice. The, uh, the print legs printing is significantly more detailed than this one. Nonetheless, I just for some reason think this one looks a bit more basic. Maybe it's because um, the, torso, like, the torso and the arms are the same colour and the actual brick or something like that. Maybe it just looks too tan almost. Maybe there's enough variation. But to me, it looks just a bit too basic. Although, it is different. Nice variation and I'm glad about that. So that being said, let's go now on to the next Rebel Trooper. Just to reiterate what I've said twice already, one of the best things about Rebel Troopers is the variety, and of course with this minifigure, the exact same thing. The variety, the skin tone, the actual torso tone, and the uh, hat, I suppose. I can't I can't call them helmets, guys. They're just not helmets. But anyway, the hat is also significantly different, although we have seen it before. I'm not sure if we saw it in this exact colour. We might very well have done. I believe it was the ATST or another set. We saw it. I think it was slightly different, though, but please correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like I'm wrong. I tend to be wrong with most things. But nonetheless, if we have seen it before, that's still very nice to get in that bad pack of course so overall, of course, we get the same um, shooter, which I don't like, which I can take off right now. Other than that, however, everything else is also significantly different, and he does look very cool. The printing in this sort of light bluish grey kind of thing does look also very nice as well. Goes very good, rather than just the usual tan which you've got on many other Rebel Troopers. So, yeah, moving on to the back, I think it's pretty much the same printing as the first minifigure we got, although, of course, there's a different significant colour with the ropes there and things like that. Because, of course, Rebels, unlike Stormtroopers, are meant to be sort of more ragtag kind of, you know, just more or less grab whatever they can wear. They don't have, you know, proper armour. They're just more or less a bunch of rags, you know, stick on whatever they can. But, yeah, very nice. Not really a massive amount to say. I mean, again, I do think he's, if he's not the exact same, then he is similar to the one we got in the ATSD. Still, though, very nice trooper, and I'm sure a lot of people would like to get him in, you know, um, bulk, because if you want to build your Rebel Army, then, of course, variety is a big thing of that. So, yeah, I think a lot of people would like to get him in bulk, and I'm glad we got him in this set. With that being said, he's still a very nice trooper, not much more to say, let's now, go, let's now move on to the last Rebel Trooper. 
And here is our last Rebel Trooper, very nice minifigure, just like all the rest. The hat, by the way, I'm sorry guys, I just cannot call it a helmet. The hat is significantly different, well not significantly, but it's slightly different to the one here. From what I can see, ooh, if I can just do it without it breaking, the tone is slightly lighter in this particular one. To me, this one just looks a bit younger. I don't know why, this just almost looks like the rookie of the group, I suppose, out of this battle pack. For some unknown reason, this one just looks a bit younger. I think it's just something to do with the face. But again, of course, we get this uh, spring loaded, not, I don't know why I keep calling it spring loaded, it's not spring in it. Anyway, this um, particular thing, which I don't like, and we're just going to remove that right now. Nonetheless, we get a slightly darker tone, unlike the others, which came in mostly tan, which is also, again, very nice. Variation, great on Rebels. Um, but yeah, we, the leg printing is exactly the same as I showed in the previous one, so that's very nice as well. Although the torso is significantly different, you've got this browner thing. And actual fact, I'm not sure you can tell right there, but the um, arm uh, colour and the torso colour is actually slightly different. The torso is slightly darker than the arms, which is very nice. I like the fact that it does give slightly different tones, you know, just give it a lot more originality, a lot more sort of uh, uniqueness, I suppose. You know, it feels a lot more sort of like an actual character rather than just, you know, a piece of plastic kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot of printing detail on the front there, on the torso. Very, very nice. The pouches kind of go off to the side. That doesn't bother me too much, although I understand why it may bother some people, why the pa uh, pouches kind of are, you know, cut off printing. Uh, again, it doesn't really bother me, but I understand why it may bother some others, and it sort of does continue around on the other side as well. So that's very nice. Again, the face kind of to me looks a bit young, kind of like a rookie. Not a bad thing. Again, as I said, like five times now, um, Rebels are meant to be like different, you know, all ages, that kind of stuff. But still, very cool minifigure. I'm not sure if he's one of the best. I don't really know how you'd rank the best uh, minifigure set because they're all somewhat different. But still, very nice minifigure. And I think, of course, as with all Battlefacts, you're going to want to get these set for the minifigures. So I would say this set, I mean, in my personal opinion, I'm just going to say right now, I do think, in terms of minifigures, the Rebel Alliance one, this one, is slightly better. I don't know why, maybe, I, I don't know, really. I think maybe because it's based on, on Battle Pack, or I'm, or I'm sorry, on Battlefront, and it has some other sort of aliens, whereas this one is all humans. But, I don't know, really your own preference. Really, they're both really good. If you want to build a Rebel Army, this one, all the 2016 Battle Pack, they're both very, very good. And, yeah, really, that being said, that's it for the minifigures. Let's now move on to the set, the instructions, the box, and then conclude this review. Of course, the vast majority of Battle Packs are known for the minifigures, and that's the main reason the battle pack is either successful or not successful based on the minifigures and that's the main reason people will buy a lot of that battle pack based on the minifigures but I would say that the um, set that you may get with a battle pack is also very important and sometimes can really be a good plus to the set because the thing is in months to come, months after the battle pack is released, the minifigures will most likely go down in price because of course the minifigures come in battle packs and they are probably mostly uh, available in quite a few sets and sometimes it become more popular to just buy the minifigures separately off Brickland or eBay. Sometimes you may actually be able to get it cheaper because the set really isn't worth anything. With this battle pack, however, I will say it is significantly different because, yes, while the speed is significantly smaller than many other speeders we've had before, it is different. And in fact, I would say it's a very nice speed to have. It's not really just one of those random sets, like, you know, one of those brick master type things. You may be aware of what I'm talking about, where it's kind of one of those little builds where it's not anything too special. You can't really use it. You don't really care about it. Despite the fact this is smaller, I would still say it's something that you should pick up. And in fact, it's a good addition to your little army because, of course, there were different types of speeders and different types of things that the Rebels did use. And this little turret is also very nice, something different we haven't seen before, and in fact would fit in very well, I think, to most scenery, uh, especially with sort of these um, darker, I'm not sure what you call them, I suppose darker tan pieces. Again, I'm not into brickling kind of thing, so I don't really know the exact um, n names, like of, you know, different colours, I really should. But still, these kind of coloured pieces are very nice, they're actually quite rare, and especially we haven't seen them in, like, turret sort of form before, so it's a very nice little thing to have. Starting off with the speed, I'm just going to compare it in size to the uh, Rebel Alliance from last year. I feel like I'm comparing a lot to the ones from last year. But anyway, so this is one from last year, and excuse the dust. You can see it's significantly smaller, of course. You know, this is just everything about it is just significantly smaller. It isn't really meant to hold nearly as much. I mean, this one could uh, hold two people, had a turret on the back, you know, all the different stuff. This is like a proper, you know, full length speeder. Whereas this one's kind of a mini version. This somewhat reminds me of the one, like, uh, you may be aware of the Jewel of Geonosis, or like, the one Count Dooku uses in, in Episode 2, where he's kind of running away on Geonosis. It kind of reminds me of that, of course, there's a Rebel version, in very green, but still, that's very cool. You can see on the back here, we do have these um, shooters, which do come with the minifigures. And again, this is another thing I don't particularly like. I mean, it's not as bad on a particular set. I don't really mind them as much if they do fit in, but especially on the minifigures, I don't like them, especially when, like a set such as this, or the Sheik Battle Pack, 
you have to take them off the minifigures and put them on there so you can't use them. Now, yes, of course, one person can be holding it, so one person would need a blaster anyway, but still, you know, I don't like the fact you have to do that, and really, I just very, very much rather they use regular weapons, like, you know, sort of weapons like these. This is alright, I really don't mind this on this sort of weapon, but you just get regular weapons like you used to have before, and yeah, that's, that'd be cool. Now, there isn't really a massive amount of features, of course, because, you know, it's not really known for its features. It's a very small little thing. These do move up and down. Of course, you can put a minifigure on there, and, you know, it's pretty much self-expansion. These do move up and down, that kind of stuff. But really, it's not a massive amount to show. It's more just the size of it. It is quite small, but not incredibly small. You know, comparing it to minifigure sort of lengthwise, you can see, you know, it's not ridiculously small. You know, it's decent size, and it would look fairly good in a mock. And I feel it could, in fact, do quite well with camouflage, you know, as you have, like, the main sort of army going in on these sort of speeders, you know, like the recon kind of guys go on these sort of speeders, I think that work quite well. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the turret right here, because I'm just a bigger fan of turrets, I think they're very cool, when they don't break, that is. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't, or it, did, it does go up and down, but it doesn't really properly move, in my opinion, sort of side to side, I mean, yes, of course, you can move it side to side, but in my opinion, it's kind of just a bit awkward, especially if you've got a guy standing there, how are you going to do it like that, you know, it's just, it's just a bit weird to me, so I'm not a massive fan of that design, but still, very nice, of course, for a battle pack, it is, you know, pretty cool, and not really a uh, massive amount of bad things there, and of course, as you can see, the thing um, does poke out again, I don't really mind this sort of design, it's just on the minifigures, I don't like it, but still, really, I think it's just more the design of the, these sets, which really um, appeals to me. I think that's what appeals to me with a lot of different powder packs. It's not as much like, I mean, yes, of course, the pieces are quite nice. The pieces are quite nice with this. You may not bring, uh, like, parts out as well. But also, we, if, to make a good build in a battle pack, it's also about design of it. You know, it's just like, if it looks good, you know, if it can work well in a mock. Because, of course, you know, you don't just want tanks for the mock. You also want little things like ATRTs, speeders, you know, turrets, this sort of thing. So I would say it's a very nice addition, something very cool. Um, but yeah, really, it's more if the set, not a massive amount of set. Of course, it is a bad pack, so it's not really known for the set. But with that being said, let's go now onto the instruction, the box, and include this review. The instruction manual, as of course you may expect with all these sort of backpacks, is somewhat basic, not a really massive amount of build right here. It took about 10 minutes. You can see in the back two pages of inventory, usual stuff. Here is the good stuff we want to see. This is the bit where we have like the um, construction figures. I'm afraid I won't be getting any of these. I mean, hopefully I will be getting the Death Trooper at one point, although that one already came out a little while ago. But I doubt I'll be getting any more of the newer ones. Maybe the Shore Trooper, possibly. But other than that, I can't really see myself getting any of those because to be honest with you, I'm not best a fan of the construction figures with like the actual heads and the helmets and stuff. If I was going to get one, it would either be Baze Malbus, I think his name, and, oh, I can't remember his name, I should really learn it, oh gosh, I need to see the film again, I'm sure a lot of people are screaming in the comments, oh, it's this, it's this, what's his name, I can't remember, I'm so sorry, but probably one of those two, those are the only two sort of human people I would reasonably like to get. But as uh, we see here, also the minifigures back here. Can't wait to unbox him in the Y Wing. Very, very cool. And as well as the Astromech. A lot of cool minifigures with this line. I cannot wait. They look freaking awesome. We see the back here, of course, we have every single set from this line. I am planning to get all of these apart from the Phantom. Oh, that's it. I just realised that's, that's the only one I'm not going to get because I have every single set here, including the A-Wing. The A-Wing isn't shown for some whatever reason. And for some reason, the A-Wing wasn't released at the same time. It was released a few days later. I don't know whether it was just where I went to or whether other sites did that as well, but it was a bit weird and I don't know why the A-Wing isn't shown. But still, I do have the A-Wing and the Phantom I will not be getting, unfortunately, because I, I, I'm just not a big fan of it, to be honest. But there you go, not a massive amount to say there. We've got 28 pages of build. Again, took about 10, 12 minutes. I don't really remember. Very basic battle pack, um, and yeah, let's now go on to the box. As with all battle pack boxes, the box is also quite basic, nothing much to show here. You can see on the top there, of course, you have the size reference of that particular minifigure, as well as the few things in the back, and you can show the feature we just went over. Not really a massive amount of features, as I said, it's more just you know, the sort of turret that just go up and down and just move about if you so desire, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got the, the box art here, which is very nice. I believe this is Scarif, or maybe, no, actually, I think it's another planet. My apologies. I'm not entirely sure. I'm so sorry. Maybe Jeddah? Uh, most likely Jedi, actually, when I think about it. I can't quite remember all the planets from Star Wars or the Rogue, uh, Rogue One. I'm so sorry, guys. I need to re really need to watch it again. But still, very nice box art, of course. Not much, too much to say. We've got the new Death Trooper here. Although, of course, we did see him in the previous line as well, the previous Rogue One set. Still, awesome film, by the way. I'm not sure I haven't pointed that out yet, but awesome film. We do have a little thing on the side here, which is new. I don't totally know what it is. Lego Life. Go online if you want to see what it is, but I'm afraid I don't personally know what it is. It's probably some sort of app or something. Most likely, because Lego is trying to move more to sort of, you know, the modern era, I suppose, of apps, and, you know, all oh, what those kids are doing. Anyway, that's it for the box. Let's now move on and include my review of the Rebel Trooper Battle Pack.
Thank you guys for watching my review of the Rebel Trooper Battle Pack 75164. To sum it up effectively, this battle pack is a good battle pack and worth picking up. As I've said a few times throughout this review, this isn't better than the uh, Rebel Alliance battle pack in my personal opinion. That's mostly down to the fact that minifigures, of course, which are the main focus of any battle pack. And in the Rebel Alliance battle pack, we've got different species. We've got um, like the greed, like Rodian species. We've got the other species I don't know the name of. They're blue and they've got red eyes. But the point is we've got different different species and different sort of things, they look really different, they're jetpacks, you know, and yes, I will um, say that these sets in this particular battle pack are better, I would definitely say I'd rather have this speeder and this sort of little turret rather than the other speeder before, because that, that just looked a very, very similar to other speeds we had in the past, whereas these ones are actually different, I would say these are good sets, but the minifigures, which again are the focus of most battle packs, in my personal opinion, aren't quite as good, because they aren't quite as varied, and of course, yes, they are based more of Rogue One, and in Rogue One, I believe there were just more humans, in my opinion, although, I mean, you know, it wasn't a massive difference, just, you know, there you go, but again, that's not me saying it's a bad battle pack whatsoever, even in the Rebels, I would highly recommend you get multiples of these, uh, I, I'm not going to get as many of these as I did of the Rebel battle, sorry, the Rebel Alliance battle pack, there are so many different names, but anyway, uh, mainly because back then, of course, I didn't have as many Rebels, so I really wanted to build it up. Now I've got more Rebels, I don't need to build up as much, and of course, I want to, I want to keep my Rebel army smaller than my Stormtrooper army, because that's kind of the point. The Stormtroopers are meant to overwhelm, they're meant to be more of them. So I most likely get more of the um, Death Star Troopers, sorry, what's it called? The Death Trooper Battle Pack? I don't know what's called. But the other Battle Pack, which I'm going to be reviewing next, I'll most likely get more of that than I will be of this, but still, this is a cool Battle Pack to get, absolutely no question. So that is it to my first review of 2017. Technically, we're still in 2016, and it's before Christmas, but who's counting? I'm not sure if I get these all done before Christmas. I'm trying as hard as I can, but work is kind of hectic, because right now it's like, I don't know, freaking 1 or 2 a.m. when I'm recording this, and I'm surprised my parents haven't come in and yelled at me for yelling at this time of the hour. But still, until they do that, I thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you again very soon in the next battle pack, which I cannot wait to open, because I don't have any of the Death Troopers yet, and I cannot wait to have a look at them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, troops. My throat is kind of a little froggy right now, I suppose, mainly because I'm still trying to... Uh, things, and while of course it is still a rebel, it fell off the thing, whoopsie daisy, oh god. Whether or not a battle pack is successful. That being said, the ba uh, for f sake.